And that's a wrap on the summer transfer window. Big money spent, billions actually spent by Premier League teams in general. We will discuss uh, most of the signings and we'll also touch on the, the ones that happened across seas. Uh, Juventus making big splashes, Borussia Dortmund uh, mending some of the holes that they had unfortunately uh, caused, thanks a lot, Bayern Munich. As usual, Barcelona added some necessities, which I talked about, Real Madrid also. But we're going to stick necessarily to the Premier League in the title of this clip, as you can tell us. We were the worst deadline day signings, and a list has came out. Can I interject uh, for a second? To Bleacher Report. Before we get to the list. Yeah. Uh, you started that clip, and we're keeping it, is my favorite way you've ever started a clip. Because this is going up on Saturday, right? Yeah. The transfer window ended when? Uh, Wednesday. So you, say, so you go, and that's a wrap for the transfer window, which would be like if it were like the Champions League final on Wednesday. You were like, Real Madrid has won. The Champions League final. Well, if you didn't see me, Jason, after the Champions League final, I just sat there until Saturday and then I waited, processed it, and then that was it. And that's a wrap. That was the best intro so, uh, the Bleach, channel's ever had. Bleacher Sorry. Report. All right, that's a wrap. Three days uh, plus uh, uh, after it. So whatever else. I don't know. Jesus Christ. Uh, either way, take a look at the Bleacher Report. So don't rip us apart, even though three of these are, are my go-tos. But go thank you, Bleacher Report. But thank you, Bleacher Report, for it. So these are their five worst Premier League deadline day. Oh, I was wondering signing. why it was all Premier League. <laughs> yeah. Um, and number one, straight from the bat, I don't agree with because one is they sold David Luiz for 50 million. So they technically got him back for 20 million less than what they sold him Not for. Not a piece of meat. Is it, with I know, hair. <laughs> with Sideshow Bob features. Um, I think David Luiz comes back with a different purpose this year. So if he was coming back with the expectancy of going in and starting, I actually, uh, I made a a point on 120 Sports when I was talking with my fellow uh, host on that, Kevin Egan, and he was in disarray when I mentioned this. I don't think David Luiz comes in to start. I think David Luiz comes in um, and necessarily to be a utility man on, around the back. He can play defensive midfield, which I think he did a decent job, but I don't think he starts off of John Terry, Cahill, or an informed Zuma. I think he'll be in there to push them, and if they're not playing to the highest quality, I think he may come in and play. So I think he has a... Uh, he has to fight for his place. I honestly don't think in an Antonio Conte formation, a ball-playing centre-back is the first name on the team sheet in the back four. But I was looked at as crazy. I, I think that's a fantastic analysis. A fantastic analysis? I didn't do much research for this clip. <laughs> no, you don't have to. It's David Luiz. I mean, you just we have had, to be look, like, guys, he pings a shot in from distance. Give me a break on this one, if you don't mind. So that's why I'm probably not going to comment all that much, if not at all, uh, on this one. We had seven clips to prepare for today. Okay. A lot the system broke on. down. The system broke down. Jacory's a friggin' savior. That man works miracles with his fingertips. That has nothing to do with Premier League signings. But Jacory also doesn't know about the Premier League signings, so I got him on my side. But Francis, you, would you like to continue? Surely on? you know Sissoko, right? So let me give you a little backlash. I saw a lot of backlash. <laughs> this is a guy who, um, first of all, was signed for like $1.5 million from Newcastle. Should have so been a football Rafa player. Benitez is laughing all the way to whatever sort of spending money he'll be given in either January or if he makes it back into the Premier League because Sissoko was bought for 1.5. He sold them back after three good games in the Euro 2016 for 30 million. <laughs> the same amount of money that Chelsea play, paid for one of the best midfielders in, in the Kante. Premier League, if not Europe last season, in Golo Kante, who this guy makes grass scared to be grown. Because he tramples over every single part of grass in the field in Golo Kante. He covers oh, every he, area. Diego Costa called him, he plays like a rat. Which I, is, I guess, complimentary. I mean, it's the best compliment you could ever pay. Ratatouille he's sitting there somewhere like, thanks buddy. Was, is that the name Ratatouille or was that the name of the No, guy? that's uh, our old host, Rick Strom. Oh, Linguini Alfredo. The, yeah, he's the, he's the <laughs> chef. We'll throw out a graphic. Rick looked just like him. Linguini Alfredo. <laughs> so funny. But uh, So yeah, when you can sign someone uh, for the same amount of money, you know that that's a panic buy. Tottenham. Panic bot. They were uh, in the store. The store had like three minutes to close. And they're like, ah, fuck it. Give me that. But what, what's the price? All right, 30 million. Take it. They paid uh. that for Sissoko, who, by the way, he's, he's not a bad player. I'm not saying it. Like, even at some point, there was touted that Real Madrid were interested. I'm pretty sure that was Sissoko writing his own rumors. Real Madrid interested in Sissoko. That would be Send. <laughs> oh, God. See, this is where I wish I had the Come get I, me. If I, I would. Okay. It would be so. I'm a troll. I don't know if anybody knows this. I constantly troll Francis and Hassan, uh, one of our other uh, hosts, and 
I would say friends, but our friendship is on the rocks. <laughs> uh, at TYT, I troll them religiously on Instagram and Twitter. I think it's really funny. So if I were a, uh, a football player, I would absolutely write rumors. I you would know. text report. This is the worst thing you can do because it's like counterintuitive to my own job. But I'd be like, Jason Rubin interested in Nice transfer because Balotelli's in Nice. Anonymous And then tip. the next day you'd see on Sky Sports Transfer Center, Balotelli's interested, Jason Rubin. How much do you think I'd go for? I don't know. I'm going to just... I'm or am I one of those free transfers? I'm weighing up your attributes from what I've seen in my brief window of your footballing ability. The fact that you were, were not willing to take the cone to the head. Physicality, uh, like a zero. So your bravery is down a little bit. It's like a 10. Um, your technique, on you, you hit the post on one of one effort, so it's on target in a way. So, uh, Better I'll than give you Messi that, and you know, PKs. Friend. Yeah, and your, goal, your ability to be a goalkeeper and an outfield player voluntarily, you're versatile, so I'll give How you that. Much, so my question is... You're about Give a, me a rating. About 50. Yeah, Pogba was a 55 in 2012. So you know what? Yeah. I could be like Pogba. Take it. You take it. Uh, That's why you should have taken me with you, because I would have kicked the ball and knocked the cone off my own head. How would you have done that? Oh. You should have taken me with you. You would have seen me. <laughs> you would have found out. <laughs> found out. I could just picture Jacory doing one of those trick videos that everyone does where they just like roll the ball on the ground and it still manages to go through the hoop. Oh, it's my favorite. Just I love that along, those and you would have oh. just seen them. So let's look back at the list and see if I agree with the rest of them. Um, uh, Chadley, Chad Tottenham to West Brom. I don't think that's as bad. So that's one, like Chadley uh, is, is, again, a versatile player for Tottenham. Wasn't getting as much playing time going to West Brom. Interesting signing for me. The other two, Jordan Ibe, again, Liverpool to Bournemouth, like he wasn't getting enough playing time. The yeah, value actually, in the Premier League, you can't base it on how much players are signing for because it's a ridiculous market now. It's so inflated that players you have to pay that amount of money but it still doesn't mean you need to in comparison to what you could get for the same price elsewhere that's why the Sissoko thing stays true if someone goes in the comment section and says oh well you have to pay that amount of money well yeah but you can get a better player hence why N'Golo Kante went to Chelsea for the same amount that's the reason why he's in there the one that I that didn't get included in this is uh Jack Wilshere going to Bournemouth it's not that it's the worst sign in Bournemouth I've got a good player it's for Jack Wilshere. This is a player that would often tout himself as one of the best players. He's a pretty cocky individual, uh, even though he half the time he's in the training room. What is that going to do for his career? I don't understand it. He once it was touted as the, the, the best midfielder in England, potentially. Could go on to be the next Frank Lampard. Was he really? Gerard. Yeah. Um, and that's not the move that you make if that is what you, you're aspiring to be. Uh, what about all the players that went to Stoke, <laughs> according to me and my graphic? Samir Nasri. So some Stoke fan who just tunes into TYT Sports religiously for his news is like, fuck yes. <laughs> yeah. We just got Samuel Nasri and Wilfred Bonney? What a day at the office for Stoke. Can I, uh, do you know what someone sent me, by the way, real quick on Twitter today? I thought it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. They, showed, they sent me a video titled Fat Yaya Turi playing against Real Madrid, and it's like that like loopy clown music, and it's him just like walking around the <laughs> midfield. That game, <laughs> that game was the game where I was like, all right, Yaya's done. There's no way. That was the moment where I was like, Mm, time to move on, yeah, yeah. Um, and then sticking with Manchester City, a signing that I actually asked a few people on Twitter what who they thought was the worst signing, and everyone was like, Joe Hart going to Torino. Why? They need to reiterate no, this. We this. They need to it's reiterate this thing. Is like at this point in the season, most teams have their goalkeepers wrapped up. Like you don't. Not a lot of teams are looking unless they're actively not happy with their goalkeeper, they're going to go in like Manchester City were doing. They want to go in and buy another goalkeeper. It's hard to walk into a big name team. To go from Man City, who else in that same realm could you have went to? The only other well, team I'm thinking about is maybe Liverpool, who have a German goalkeeper waiting in the ranks to come up. He's just fighting back from injury. But Arsenal have got Czech. Chelsea have got Courtois. Like, Tottenham have got... He does... Uh, he does um, you race, right? Yeah. Uh, he does have uh, an option, which is if any of those guys get injured the winter transfer window, I can easily see him leaving Torino to go back to the Port Premier League. Or any other... Look, goalkeepers get injured every so often. If someone's going to be out for an extended period of time, he might be leaving Torino. Not only are goalkeepers cut from a different pack, and that pack definitely is a little bit mental, is that goalkeepers need playing time. Now, you can't sit and ride the bench and then wait for an old FA Cup tie to come on and <laughs> strike your stuff, and then suddenly you're at the peak of your game, especially when you are, as of this moment, still the England number one. You have to maintain yourself in that oh, position. Fraser Foster, point. who I know well and truly as one of the greatest goalkeepers I've ever seen in a Celtic shirt, phenomenal goalkeeper, he's knocking on the door. He plays every game for Southampton. He's waiting to go and uh, move up in the ranks. Jack Butland, another go uh, good goalkeeper yeah, as well. So, uh, Joe Hart, 
that over anything, it was at the point I imagine he had this conversation with his agent saying, get me good wages and get me playing time. That's the only thing I need. I don't care where it is. I need to play every single week. You cannot have your choice of the best teams that are in the same category as Man City because most of them happen to have good goalkeepers. So, fair to me. that wraps it up, I think. Uh, as far as the worst, it's Sissoko. Not by player, but by the amount of money spent in the panic buy that Tottenham Hotspur went in and spent. Uh, Balassi as well is a guy who is consistent as he is inconsistent. Um, which doesn't really make that He's much sense. He's consistently inconsistent. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I wouldn't pay that term. amount of money for him either. Um, I think Crystal Palace got a good signing out of that, a good amount of money taken in from that. But I think the Jordi and Newcastle are laughing all the way to the bank. They got money back on two players um, who didn't perform last season, when Aldum and Susoko, who they managed to offload for more money than anything. And I think they'll do all right in the championship. Here's in the comments, TYT Sports, Francis underscore Maxwell, Jason Rubin 91. Catch you soon. Yeah.